Give him thanks also for answered prayers today. We have prayed to a prayer answering God, not to an idol. He has ears and he hears. He has eyes and he sees. We do give him thanks for answers to your prayers this morning. Celebrate and magnify him. There is no one like Jesus. We give you glory, Lord, and we give you praise. Ask him to speak to you this morning, Jesus. I want to hear from you. Speak to me, Lord Jesus, and speak to me now. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. And all the people came early in the morning into the temple for to hear him. Jesus, cause the ears of each one to be open today. Yes. And cause our heart to understand what you are saying. Yes. And move each one of us forward yes. in our walk with you. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. It's my year of breaking limits. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And please, you may be seated. Obedience speaks louder than voice. We never heard a word from Abraham. Get out of their country, from their kindred, to learn I'll show you, and I'll dare make of you a great nation. And I will bless you, make their name great. And in this shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And so, without a voice, Abraham departed. Obedience speaks louder than voice. By chapter 13, Abraham became very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Verse 2. By chapter 14, Abraham had an army of 318 strong men that could take on the army of another nation. Abraham had become a nation. Praise God. So, Abraham stepped into generational greatness, generational greatness through raw obedience. Through raw obedience. And so the Lord appeared to Abraham, take thy son, the only son Isaac, whom thou loveth, and come over, I'll show you a mountain where you will sacrifice him unto me. And so Abraham rose up early in the morning. No voice, raw obedience. Because you have done this thing, and you have not withheld thy son, the only son from me. By myself, I sworn that in blessing I will bless you. Multiply and I will multiply thy seed as the sand by the seashore. And in thy seashore, all the families of the earth be blessed. Because you have obeyed my voice. Genesis 22, verse 16 to 18. Because you have obeyed without a voice. Obedience brought Abraham into the realm of transgenerational blessing. And now, Jesus said he saw Abraham on a throne and Lazarus at his footstool in heaven. Amen. He was saying that in the parable in Luke chapter 16. And now, Abraham is a symbol of blessings in Christ. God has redeemed us. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law by being made a cause for us. It causes everyone to hang it upon the tree. That the blessing of Abraham. That the blessing. Raw obedience, no voice. No one knows what is in obedience until he has obeyed. That's the simple thing there. No one can tell what treasures are in it until you have taken it upon yourself to obey God. Seek ye for the kingdom of God. 
you can't tell what it carries until you engage with that truth. If any man purge himself of all these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, made for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. You can't tell what's in it until you commit yourself to purging yourself. Obedience brought the massive walls of Jericho down. No voice. Don't talk. Oh. Go around this wall. Once per day for six days. And seven times on the seventh day. Until you hear the sound of the trumpet. And the walls came down flat. Raw obedience will bring any barrier in our life down. As if they never existed. Anything standing between us and our promised land will come crashing as we engage with raw obedience to his instructions. Very important. Impregnable wall. We are told that six courses of chariots will run on the wall. So even if the wall falls, it will still be a wall. But we say the wall fell down flat. It simply means the walls sank. The walls sank. Awesome God. Every act of obedience opens a new chapter to our life. Every act of obedience opens a new chapter to our lives. In everything, give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And he said, after you have done the will of God, you obtain the promise. So you can't murmur to obtain the promise. You have to be thankful to ever see the promises come to pass in your life. So you can see how much unthankfulness and ingratitude may have cost us. You can't tell what is in it until you have engaged. He that reapeth receives wages as he gathers fruits unto life eternal. And what does the wages cover? When I sent you and you went, lucky anything, they said nothing. It covers everything. The wages in return for reaping and gathering covers every need of our lives covers every need of our lives. When our obedience is fulfilled, we disarm all oppositions to God's glorious agenda for our life. He said in 2 Corinthians 3, I mean 10, and verse 3 to 6, though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing to captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, so that when our obedience is fulfilled, we'll be able to avenge all disobedience. All, all. Every opposition bows to our total obedience to the world. Every. My prayer is that obedience will become our new lifestyle in Christ. Well, but very important, please, God does not enforce obedience on anyone obedience is simply the choice of individuals 
if you will diligently hearken, left to you, to my voice, and observe to do all that I command thee. I, the Lord, will set you on high above all nations. The word there is if. It's a choice to make. Now, I stand at the door and knock. Hello, I have this package for you. If any man chooses to open, I will come in. If he refuses to open, I pass on. Revelation 3.20. Now, if they obey and serve him, so it's not a gift, serving God is a choice. Choose you this day whom you shall serve. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. God does not force anyone to obey him. He leaves each of us to make our choice to obey or disobey. Obedience is not a gift. It's a choice. Choose ye this day when you shall serve, Joshua 24, 15. But as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. We, we will serve the Lord. That's, I've made my choice. And on behalf of my family, we will serve the Lord. So it's a choice to make. It's not a gift to yearn for. It's a choice to make. There is no one who has not heard and overheard <laughs> Matthew 33 in this church. Everybody has been hearing it every day. I'm not sure there's any service without Matthew 33. No. But God won't force you. He won't force me to embrace it. You make your choice of what you want to obey. We read the story of a man that had two sons. He said to the first one, you go and work for me today. He said, I will not go. He told the second one, go. He said, I go, sir. He never went. He said so, but he never did so. The first one repented and said, no, I can't answer my father like that. I'm going. And went. He said, which of the two did the will of God, the will of the father? The first. Not the one who said so, but the one who did so. It's a choice. There was no prayer point in that decision. Each one just chose. The first one, the first time he made a wrong choice, I will not go. I have my own shadow. The one saying, is that, you want me to go? I go now. Now, if I finish saying it, I've left. He didn't. It's all about making a solid choice for the world, for the instructions of the Lord that makes all the difference. If you watch the story of Abraham, there was no time he prayed. Now, shall I go? No. The Lord said, get thee out. And so Abraham departed. Now, the Lord appeared to him, I'm, I want to make a covenant with you. Every male born in your house and born with your money must be, have their foreskin circumcised. As soon as the Lord left off speaking to him, Abraham began with himself and Ishmael. There was no prayer point, there was no fasting. Raw obedience by choice. Raw obedience by choice. <laughs> now, take your son, your only son, Isaac. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. He had it in the night. He rose up early in the morning. All direct products of choice. Whatever God wants to do with me, let him do with me. No, what? Your choice is what is dealing with you. It's my choice that's dealing with me. It's not God. I lay before you life and death. Choose life. <laughs> I lay before you heaven and hell. Choose which one you want. 
Let him do what he pleases. That's a dangerous statement. What he pleases in the world. You obey me, this is where you are going. You disobey me, this is where you are going. So you are the one to make a choice. God has made his choice. He has presented to you his choice. The options available to you and me. May each one receive grace this morning to make obedience our natural choice. That God says it, you believe it, and you go ahead working it out. God says it, you believe it, and you go ahead working it out. Many people have escaped from the trauma of life by simple obedience. Many have escaped from the entrapment of the devil by simple obedience. Simple obedience. Simple obedience. Even salvation. The reason why God will judge anybody is because it's available to all. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. All men. There is no one under the sun that God has slated for hell. No, he says, prepare for the devil and his angels. So people only choose to join him. No. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whoso, whosoever, anyone, anyone that is so ever interested shall not perish but have everlasting life. Obedience is a choice. It's not a gift. It's not a calling. Obedience is a choice. The liberal soul shall be made fat. Now you are hard fisted. When will you be made fat? It's not in view. Now, you have not chosen me, I have chosen you that you should go forth and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should abide. This is my assignment for you as a branch of the vine. Now, you choose to obey that or not, and if you do, Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Amen. So it's all a choice. Stand to your feet, please. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delights himself greatly in his commandment. His seed also shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. And his righteousness endure forever. There is nothing more refreshing in the faith than delightsome obedience. What do I call it? Willful obedience. You are not coerced. You are not pressurized. It's just from within you. Willful obedience. Praise God. Stress-free obedience. Complaint-free obedience. Excited obedience. Cheerful obedience. You owe God ten souls. No, I don't owe God anything. I say I owe God. Am I a pastor? I don't owe God nothing. All this harassment. I, I don't owe God anything. Tell him. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Many will encounter destiny in this prophetic season. Amen. What I encountered in that village was not, uh, uh, it was, it was encounter with destiny. The light you have brought to our village let it shine around the world. I was 19 years old. When I couldn't afford to be in a place for 72 days where Jesus has no foothold. Jesus, I mustn't leave this village where I met it. And heavens came down. Give me light. Give me insight. And Jesus planted a church when I had no calling of any kind of my life. I just had a born name, passion, to see others saved. Somebody must encounter destiny this time. Yeah. God has ordained that you encounter destiny. Yeah. Anyone you invite will be so glad to follow you. Yeah. Anyone you speak to will be so glad to submit to Jesus. Yeah. Before this season is over, you're 10, you're 20, they are standing with you as solid as a rock. Yeah. And my God, who is also your God, will visit you. 
Lift up your two hands and thank God for light. Light has come this morning. Thank God for light. Thank God for light. Obedience is a choice. It's not a gift. God does not enforce obedience on anyone. It's everyone's choice. Lord, I thank you for light. I thank you for light. Obedience speaks louder than voice. What to do imparts on our life much more than what we say. It is what we do that gives power to what we say. We don't do it. What we say is, is worthless. Thank God for light. Thank God for light. Thank God for light. Thank him for light right now. 